shall I say good afternoon already. Um, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all to the 2022 User Centricity Summit here in Barcelona. For those of you who don't know me, I am uh, Chris Sulamita and I'm Associate Director at the Lisbon Council and I will be your host for today. We are convening here in Barcelona under the timely theme, what citizen, citizens need, what cities can deliver, how Kiev and leading cities use digital technology to serve citizens. And of course, this is not as simple as it sounds. Against the backdrop of the war in Ukraine, and while we're just out of the COVID-19 pandemic, but still entering into a global energy crisis, digital services have become now, more than ever, a life or death matter. And in that respect, the city of Kyiv is a true inspiration for all of us. Not only for fighting back against Russian aggression so bravely, but also for their courage and for their resilience, their persistence in keeping government services running, in repurposing old services to the needs imposed by the war, and even designing new ones and new strategies that save people's lives and secure access to vital resources that we know how scarce they are right now in Kyiv and also across Ukraine. I'm delighted that we'll hear later about all this from Petro Olenic, who is the Deputy Mayor and Chief Digital Transformation Officer in the city of Kyiv and has made the difficult journey from Ukraine to be with us here today. Now, luckily, other European cities and regions don't have to cope with war, but challenges such as the pandemic and the energy crisis have sparked the need not only to make services more convenient and faster, but also to deliver proactive help to citizens, and in particular, those in need. And this is what the new policy brief that my colleague David Osimo will present later today explains. It calls for making a leap forward in digital public services and offering them proactively, especially to those in need. I hope you all got your copies on your way in and you will enjoy reading the paper and the ensuing discussion later. So as you probably know, the summit is co-hosted today by the User Centricities Network. I am delighted to see here so many of you gathering in Barcelona and also meeting you for the first time. User Centricities is a 28 partner consortium led by two think tanks, the Lisbon Council in Brussels and VTT, the Technical Research Center of Finland, and uh, Eurocities One Association. User Centricities has grown into a 24 city network starting from only six. Um, I will only mention the newest members. Riga is one of uh, our newest members with their newly established digital agency. Arezzo in Italy, Mataró and uh, Terrassa, both cities here in uh, Catalonia. And of course, Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. The stronghold of Europe's eastern border, eastern border is a member at user centricities. Of course, Catalonia, the region, the Generalitat de Catalonia, is among our newest members and they are our wonderful hosts today. A big thank you to the government of Catalonia for hosting us here and to the Directorate General for Digital Administration and Organizations. We are very grateful for your hospitality in this wonderful new building. Now, on more practical matters, the session will run for 90 minutes. We are on the record and, there, and we're also live streaming. So. Hi to everyone who's watching us online too. Uh, and we also have journalists in the room. If you do write about the summit, please mention that it convened in Barcelona by user centricities and the government of Catalonia as a courtesy. So with that, it's my great pleasure, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, it's my great pleasure to welcome our keynote speaker today, Petro Olenic. Petro is a deputy mayor and chief digital transformation officer of Kyiv. As such, he oversees the city's digital transformations. And uh, since he took office in 2021, the city has launched Kyiv Digital, its flagship applications. It moved forward from paper to electronic tickets in public transportation. It built the first urban infrastructure in Ukraine for the introduction of the Internet of Things. 
and, and many more projects that Petro will be talking to us uh, about today. So thank you, uh, Petro, for, and to Kiev uh, for being with us. Petro will deliver his keynote in Ukrainian. Uh, there is translation available. Please use the headsets that you found on your way in. English is in channel one and Ukrainian in channel two. Petro, we look forward to hearing from you about the situation in Kiev, the role digital technology plays in keeping lives moving forward. Please all join me in thanking Petro and the people of Kiev and welcome Petro to stage. <laughs> Дякую всім. Ага, добре. Так. Дякую всім за підтримку, за те, що ви вірите в нас, за те, що не покидаєте в такий складний час. І що я вам хочу сказати, війна насправді то просто надзвичайне лихо. Але е, найтяжча форма цього лиха. Тому, е, насправді, будь-які виклики, які, з якими на сьогодні стикається місто Київ, вони е, можуть стихійними лихами або наслідками будь-яких інших You could transfer it uh, to the other uh, situations that it could happen in the cities. Of course, it's uh, not war. Uh, thanks for God. Ми зробили ставку ще 5 років тому. Ви вас фокус in uh, digital uh, for the Ukraine uh, for uh, Kiev and we would like to say that it was started 5 years ago. Урахуванням глобальних кліматичних цілей. Ви вас really focus uh, to the uh, security of the city. Це uh, of the в даному випадку в нас була the strong environment інструментом, вона і на сьогодні є. This uh, topic this topic so it's Люди, only the instrument дані, but the most important uh, is uh, the people who Люди, are behind these numbers the people who took these uh, um, services uh, the people who behind who work of this we're trying to be easier uh, i teams uh, to how to develop uh, this uh, i teams uh, and our team it's a uh, working um, work to this uh, in this way and since uh, 260 we started with the digitalization but something simple but we understood that it's um, that we understood that in 220 we would like to uh, improve and uh, year by year but uh, even uh, today that it's uh, really hard but uh, it's not a stop uh, for the digitalization of uh, Kiev so we strong to develop a better technicization in our city. It's no mind uh, what happened, what it's uh, happened in US or even in uh, Europe, it uh, could be different uh, uh, disasters. Uh, and uh, you could uh, use this uh, way how to uh, improve uh, in your cities. Uh, how improve uh, the better life in, uh, for the emergencies uh, in the cities in Europe and uh, all around the world. What we started five years ago, from this time we actively uh, three years uh, working uh, the basic infrastructure. The infrastructure of the relevant uh, technology, sensor uh, system, camera connected uh, to the situa uh, situation center. Uh, all this uh, better situation, it's uh, become uh, uh, improve the crime in uh, Kiev. The city it was become more and more safety and uh, more friendly and also for the visitors. The electronic uh, uh, digitalization uh, uh, we also for, for us it was a great uh, helpful because uh, we took uh, information from the citizens uh, and uh, also for the citizens uh, bring our services so this, uh, they become uh, 
helpful our um, services more and more. Some services uh, was improved and uh, we took that data to improve them uh, for the future uh, for the future uh, services uh, for the, our citizens. Also, for the in uh, digital uh, digitalization, be also thinking about how they could uh, uh, be close to the uh, to the digital, uh, how they could access to them. No matter, uh, no matter where you. Uh, use, uh, when citizens are living. So we have a centers, communication centers, the people who do not have available to access for some digitization, they have centers when they could uh, go uh, and uh, keep more information about how to use it. The unique Kyiv uh, uh, it says uh, up, uh, help uh, started with uh, uh, transport uh, easiest uh, way how to parking how uh, how to buy some tickets uh, for the transport. It's a it's become easier to uh, citizens uh, uh, go through the city and to be and we back uh, with a really high uh, uh, revenue from uh, the citizens that they was really happy was uh, happy with the services all the services uh, it's a uh, government uh, it's from uh, uh, Kiev it's not private services so all the citizens was happy with the public uh, services we develop of course, we also reduce the queue uh, in uh, some uh, services uh, that it's needed. If, if you need uh, any information, uh, if you need something to bring uh, any documentation, you go uh, also directly use uh, the application uh, Kiev Digital to, to use uh, this um, uh, appointment. And of course, the uh, uh, documents uh, become digital uh, signature much more easiest. So it becomes the uh, administration uh, services become uh, uh, much more easiest. It's this way how we starting uh, with the parking uh, system. It's a unique system of parking. Uh, it's not only gives uh, services uh, to the citizens, but also it give a feedback uh, to us that we could improve our services. We are con controlling the inspectors. We also uh, see what its uh, inspectors uh, doing. Uh, also, uh, all the recipes uh, and papers, uh, it's uh, all the uh, digital. It's also different uh, signature and sending to registration to administration. It's only also possible to pay uh, online or if it's uh, wanted uh, by, uh, to go to the bank. Everything is uh, registered uh, in uh, uh, Kiev Digital and you could uh, check all this information there. The same way as uh, time of parking you could pay there. Another point, it's a uh, democracy uh, that uh, also, uh, thanks to this, um, uh, we could uh, take uh, information from our citizens. So citizens become more and more trustful with this um, application. So we are really, finally, a really a proof of this inst uh, instruments uh, to to, to uh, make a democracy and uh, have this information for us. People are trust us uh, and, uh, and uh, they use a signature uh, to give his uh, notes, uh, give this uh, uh, how they would like to change some, uh, maybe uh, change streets names uh, or they want to change uh, some uh, uh, facilities in the transport. Uh, it's a big chat that, uh, let's say, help us to bring this information to the city. 
the last time uh, that we make a, a, a questionnaire of uh, how to uh, change the name of the street and we receive uh, six million answers from the uh, citizens. So it's a big, uh, we are really proud that we have really a big acceptation from the citizens of our uh, city. So also the, we checking, of course, uh, the budget uh, after uh, uh, previous to the war. So uh, we dedicated uh, uh, ma dedicated money to um, uh, how to how to citizens could uh, make uh, budgeting uh, acceptation. So we put also in application, and they could check. Uh, what how uh, what it's uh, better what to invest and then uh, finally when it's uh, finished uh, this uh, uh, information we again make another answer, uh, information what we took how many cities uh, participate so for us it's give uh, a lot of details uh, how to forward uh, uh, with a decision uh, for the municipality and of course, unfortunately, the next uh, point uh, in 2020, uh, we, yeah, we have a war and we have uh, our development, but that now uh, in the 220, we change it uh, completely the situation previous uh, to the war. We was uh, working normally till 220 with the transport, controlling the uh, uh, environment and uh, uh, how it's uh, work everything at the budgeting. But here it's uh, we need to change everything and we have really short time to, to, do, to do these services to, uh, to not uh, give a uh, possibility to, to live comfortably, to save their lives in this uh, moment. So we need to uh, develop a completely different uh, uh, application. And uh, this is in 24 hours uh, we did uh, this application, uh, what, we, what we needed uh, in that moment at night at uh, 24. Uh, 25 of February, of February, we already started to test, uh, and uh, in two days, in two days, uh, this application was uh, work perfectly, and uh, give information to the uh, citizen uh, uh, about uh, bombs uh, and what is happening uh, in, uh, in Kiev. Till the previous to the war, we don't have any communication uh, about uh, this kind of uh, information. Uh, of course, it's a lot of information that uh, come uh, from the website, uh, from the, but it's not was trustful uh, information. So we need to develop some kind of application that it was trustful, first of all. Of course, we was also uh, be uh, attacked by cyber attack and also fake information is that we need to be uh, proved that it's uh, what it's not true, what it's not true. So, uh, as you know, this element uh, of the war, it's of course a lot of uh, a lot of uh, not trust information. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, information that it's uh, not true, and the uh, citizens could be become a panic. If uh, the cities uh, are panics, so what happened, uh, it's uh, first day, like it's happening uh, in uh, Kiev, it's, uh, it was a lot of uh, truck traffic uh, jump, and uh, we uh, tried to avoid that, and we're trying to develop something that it's uh, control all these uh, uh, trust uh, channels uh, of the information, but it's uh, really a uh, proof information that, of course, all the cities uh, take this information and uh, take this information to prove his, uh, to save his lives. So this is this uh, uh, development. We already using it to to waste uh, not only the civilian, uh, civilian uh, and also the war. Uh, uh, you also would like uh, uh, use this application, so you could, uh, if you go to the application, you could uh, download, and you could see it's uh, two application. One it's uh, for the war, another one for the civilian. If uh, we see that it, if we see that it's something happened. Uh, so, first uh, step, we give all the information uh, to the citizens uh, what exactly happened in the uh, actual moment. Second one, 
and we give the instruction where uh, the cities need to go and what, how they need to act in this situation. So this uh, give uh, uh, real, right now in uh, Kiev it's uh, 300 million half uh, Kiev, uh, P uh, Kiev and Kiev back to Kiev and uh, they use this application to ha uh, how they need to behave in the city. This information, this information is uh, updated daily with uh, businesses, uh, for example, uh, for the pharmacy, how, uh, how, we need, how uh, when they could uh, repair the car, where it's uh, medicine, even uh, for the, uh, even our pets or some dogs, if they need help, how we uh, work uh, all the small details, so how to we need to uh, how we need to uh, uh, way, uh, how we need to do if uh, it's something happened with the bomb attack again so our team we are really proud of this uh, part we would like to share this uh, unique uh, the unique uh, experience that we had of course we don't would like that uh, nobody have this experience but of course we would like to share with uh, all of you that this, uh, we, we understand that if, uh, if uh, something happened with the weather uh, or um, any, any other uh, way of emergency, this, uh, this uh, application could be used in any other uh, situation. So, so if uh, if electricity is stop and uh, nothing is uh, working, we know how to we know we know how to provide the information to the uh, to the citizens. So we and we know how to provide uh, the electricity to uh, to the, our citizens, even in this situation. Even uh, yeah, even the energy points are broken, and we don't have electricity in that moment, and uh, we have a four years light in the city, but still everything is working. Everything is uh, no any problems. They trustful. It's the most important that they trustful, and of course, they protect the cyber uh, attack. Якраз наступна і одна з головних варіацій це The next uh, the most important uh, variation it's our наш зараз слово забув. Sorry, uh, I forgot the, exactly the uh, word. Uh, it's how exactly we took for us uh, this uh, hard uh, uh, this uh, attack for the city and how we know how to maintain our how to maintain everything we have a lot of uh, cyber attacks uh, in our infrastructures, uh, uh, digital services also. At the moment, uh, Kiev is the most digital uh, uh, developed uh, city in Ukraine, it's uh, Kiev. So we receive a lot of uh, cyber attacks, so of course we know how to deal right now with this. We understood how to uh, now uh, deal with uh, this uh, attack and uh, know how to protect the information. Now we... This is the main system Exactly the next point uh, we starting to speak about uh, uh, what where we need to focus uh, to develop. So we need the, we develop the public uh, safety environment, uh, social assistance, education, e-commerce, health and transport. Right now we really focus uh, in uh, health sector uh, during the COVID, and uh, we create uh, the uh, uh, the application for the uh, health care so any um, citizen could uh, go to the um, uh, different application when they could uh, use uh, 
when they could buy uh, the medicines that they need. We, uh, also, they, if they not feel they good themselves, they know exactly the portion they need uh, to, uh, to take and what pills they need to take. Another one, uh, it's uh, going to speak about the transport. So we also how to um, manage the traffic jump. And of course, uh, during the war, we know how to we need to know how to deal uh, in order that uh, bring uh, the military transport about the public uh, safety we are planning actively we are planning actively the center we work uh, really uh, focused in uh, 112 uh, emergency call with uh, digital uh, uh, information and also army and uh, uh, army uh, and the civil uh, infrastructure because we are, now we understood because we have uh, one priority for the infrastructure for the citizen but of course for the military we need uh, exactly a completely different uh, uh, way to proceed so we also integrate and uh, know how to deal in uh, this both situation so we need to uh, put a uh, joint uh, the, two, uh, the civilian and uh, military information together in uh, order to save uh, our citizen. It's something that uh, you need to integrate probably in all the countries. It's uh, not because uh, the war, but it's uh, normally because military army is always out of the uh, civilian. But, but to integrate it together, it's a really hard work. And of course, it's uh, good to think, uh, think uh, at the beginning uh, to implement uh, them. Because it's, uh, for the emergency situation, it's uh, really important uh, to have it. Uh, uh, in the, uh, 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 together with uh, civilian, because uh, we need to think uh, how to uh, uh, develop uh, the food to the city, how to healthcare, and everything is integrated with the military services. The most important services uh, on all this uh, uh, joining uh, between these two, uh, it's uh, it's uh, bring to the civilian the uh, uh, military information to the civilian and uh, otherwise uh, to the civilian information to the military so during this uh, for example for the, in the time of war to know how to better uh, give the information to our citizens and another one of the most important uh, it's uh, environment yeah. Environment, uh, it's, uh, needs, we need to be focused also, uh, really, in, we need to be keep good ecology in the city. It's no matter if uh, it's war or it's not war, we always need to be focused uh, in the uh, environment, because if it's not a good one, of course nobody wants to live in the city. So in the future, we focus uh, in uh, the better uh, in the improvement of the uh, environment, and of course, all the decisions we need to understand that this, we need to develop something that our future and our children could uh, uh, use them and give them facilities uh, to live in a, in a better uh, city, in a better country. So they need to be really good develop, uh, good develop and strategically thinking about for the future. In this way, we know that in the future we have a, a good uh, uh, environment uh, in the, for the future, not only the city, also the country, for the, all the citizens. Uh, knowing this, uh, we know that uh, the citizens are happy uh, and they uh, have citizens uh, allowed to live uh, in the uh, 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 city where they are. Another point, uh, social assistance. 
Medicinal oblik, yes, social oblik. Uh, As I already commented, that uh, we have a health care and uh, we have a personal uh, digital ID. So we already know uh, uh, with all the uh, user of the application, so we know already who uh, of them they need uh, in that moment. For example, uh, people who uh, need uh, the medicine, need uh, some kind uh, some kind of medicine and how to develop. So, because uh, we have in one moment, we have 5 million in the city uh, of uh, population that uh, become uh, 700 only. But uh, 700 uh, citizens, they also needed help with uh, medicine, with uh, food, and especially there was uh, uh, old people that uh, need, uh, need uh, a lot of help. So, uh, so it was, uh, we need to really focus on that, uh, that people that need our help. So we are uh, young uh, just uh, generation, we need to think about uh, that uh, people and uh, give uh, all the uh, information and uh, facilities to them. So this uh, brings us uh, to us uh, all that uh, information with uh, which uh, we could uh, uh, could uh, develop a better uh, application for our uh, for our city. Another point uh, is education. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the numbers uh, change uh, our uh, perspectives, but uh, behind the numbers, uh, uh, it's people. Uh, there are people. So we need to know what it's. Uh, Cifra, uh, the number is only the instrument, but of course we need thinking about the people who is behind the, the numbers. So this means uh, we need to uh, have a high-quality uh, uh, high education. For the uh, scholars, so we develop uh, digital uh, information uh, also for the teachers, not only for the, uh, the alumni, but also for the teachers. Uh, so we have a structure uh, how we need to develop our teachers. And of course, uh, of course, uh, internet uh, for, uh, so after uh, last five years, uh, we uh, develop a really high uh, development uh, internet uh, all around uh, around uh, the city, and also for also for the points where it's not usually not. Uh, uh, internet, but with uh, Wi-Fi, uh, we developed a good uh, uh, implementation for that place it's, uh, in a time of war where it's uh, needed. So we need to have the facilities of the communal network and the Wi-Fi in all the schools uh, and also in the... Uh, areas uh, that the people are staying and normally not uh, have internet, but they have internet, they could uh, be uh, implemented uh, education. Back into the war, so of course uh, this information is uh, uh, complemented uh, to the schools, uh, so they need, uh, when, uh, they need uh, to start uh, uh, starting and when they need to stop. Democracy uh, first of all, the uh, democracy gave us opportunity to uh, uh, to have an information and optimize that uh, data uh, and uh, know how how to better uh, uh, invest uh, the budget that the city uh, have. Uh, these instruments give us uh, uh, the, 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 the,
також звучить до виконання so uh, involve забезпечувати комфортні умови території частину бюджету а so we could control it and, of course, and give the information uh, where we are spending uh, that uh, investment and uh, what we are doing. Of course, uh, in a time of uh, emergency, citizens are really trust in the application because uh, we show them that uh, the investment was a good done. Finally, if the government, uh, if the citizens are trust in the information, they uh, have the good back to us with the trust suggestion. Вона а, почала свій старт з COVID-19. Ми проходили вже разом All of you know what it's how long we stay at home during the vaccination, how it was a vaccine, who already been past the COVID. So in uh, the digital city, so, this, uh, of course, uh, everybody could uh, check uh, what is need they uh, if they have any allergic, if they could check uh, if they have any allergic, if they could check so they could know if it's uh, the allergy that, for example, they have, it's something general in the city or it's something particular. So uh, understand if it's something general, they could understand what uh, it uh, came from. So uh, improve your health uh, health care. Це якраз те, за для чого взагалі міська влада існує. It's exactly for what uh, we are, transport, transport, uh, why, why, why we are, and <laughs> of course uh, we're trying to bring this information to our citizens. Another point is that uh, transport, it's, uh, we see, like for example in Barcelona, it's uh, working really good, it's uh, really comfortable, everybody, it's uh, really easy to uh, go through the city, and, and of course uh, the citizens are happy in the city, of course, because it's no problem, no problem to... Uh, to traveling uh, in the city. So it's not only the good for the uh, city, it's all the, for the happiness uh, everybody uh, who living in the, uh, for everyone who living in the city. So not, uh, we focus not only what, uh, anything what happened. If we have a strong digital uh, situation, if we have a strong team who gives this uh, services and, and having the citizens who are using them we, we, could, we could even our team could develop uh, this kind of digitalization and we, the why we are here and we would like to share this information with all of you that uh, even in an emergency situation we could develop this kind of uh, uh, information in our application. And it's together we could uh, <laughs> it's good help uh, for the, our kids, kids uh, best uh, way to live in uh, our Thank cities. You. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Petro, what can I say after this? I have a confession to make. When we started getting engaged with Kiev at Jesus and Tristis, I thought we would be able to share the knowledge of other cities with Kiev. But I was wrong. I was totally wrong. We have to learn from Kiev. This is, and this is what's happening every each and every time that we, um, that we interact with you. And, and I always have to remind myself that what you're talking about is happening in war. Um, and that's that's remarkable. We all stand with Kiev. Thank you for the gift today. We all start with, stand with Ukraine. 
And, uh, and I would like to open the floor to questions from you. Now, if you'd like to ask a question uh, to Petro, please do it now. There are my colleagues here have the roving mics. There's a question here that I see from Zarin. It on. Hello? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Can you introduce yourself? Yes. Um, hello, I'm uh, Zareen from BTT Finland. And I would like to ask, uh, how many people do you have uh, working for this application? And was it uh, 6 million people that you said that you are able to reach uh, through this app in the city? Thank you. I think we can... Они более дословно переведи, пожалуйста. А, окей. На сегодня в нас активных користувачей... Today, uh, the active users, uh, Kiev uh, Digital, uh, municipality uh, users, больше двух миллионов. More than two million every day users. There are users who take all the information about the transport, parking, or the services, uh, electricity information, and other uh, services. Окремо системи медичного соціального страхування для for the health care. For the health seats, it's uh, 600 uh, uh, citizens. It's uh, one group that it especially need uh, help. These two groups, there are they're crossing information uh, of this, uh, yeah. It's exactly from this uh, data that we bring uh, to the uh, municipality. Thanks to this information, the who it's, uh, it's a little bit less, uh, uh, less uh, than three million, it's uh, two half a million that are always uh, using this information. And always uh, using Kiev um, uh, And also, I would like to focus that, uh, that it's an uh, application. We also not only uh, using uh, in the application uh, in the Kiev Digital and also in other um, areas uh, of the city. Healthcare. So the idea it's. Uh, even somebody who not could uh, use uh, application, uh, there are points, uh, it's not uh, digital people, so they be all normal, it's uh, old people, so they normally not use this uh, application. We have uh, centers when uh, uh, they could uh, come and uh, know all this information. And thanks uh, to them, we also bring uh, the data uh, to the, our application for the um, uh, municipality. And in another, uh, another uh, digital information, it's uh, close to 1,000 uh, yeah. also using. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, any, any other all. questions from uh, the audience? Um, in that case, I would like uh, to abuse the mic and ask you a question. You mentioned trust a few times. You said people trust us. How do you ensure trust? among citizens in Kiev, especially in this time? Um, Everything is really easy. We give the instruction what they need to do, and we show, uh, we see what the citizen is doing. And we see that everybody doing what exactly we put in the instruction. Thank you. Petro, we again thank you for making the, the trip from Kiev. Yeah. It's a great pleasure. Uh, so I would like to move on with the program and I would like to introduce uh, my colleague David Osimo, Director of Research at the Lisbon Council. Dire uh, 
David will uh, present uh, the new policy brief we're launching today. He's one of the driving forces behind youth centricities. Hi. Hi. It's great to be here and to talk after such an inspiring presentation. Uh, user centricity does many things. Uh, it's a network of cities. We have dashboards, we benchmark, we discuss, and and we do policy briefs. What comes? We try to distill this discussion and transform them into operational. Uh, input in for European policymakers based on the real life experience of cities. And today I'm glad to present this new policy brief that you have seen called Help Where It's Most Needed, uh, co authored by Prisa and Grace, who are here with us today. So, what are we talking about when it comes to proactive service delivery? We live in disruptive times, not just Kiev, each of us, we just go into the pandemic. And look at this. The small bubble is the public spending in the aftermath of the financial crisis. The big bubble is the spending in the aftermath of the pandemic. You see how things have changed. And Europe has launched the recovery and resilience facilities. The word we always use in European jargon, in this case, it's unprecedented. This is, you always heard this. Now, this is, certainly bold and important by policymakers, but the issue is, what do we do with this? Well, okay, it went. <laughs> the issue is, does help reach those who need it most? And the, the, the answer is, too often not. And this is, uh, this is a result of a review by Eurofound, and you will find similar results by other studies mentioned in the in the policy brief by the European Commission, there is a huge gap in take up of social benefits. A lot of people are entitled to receive the benefits, but they don't get it. The numbers are quite impressive, as you can see. 57% of people entitled to guaranteed income in 2007 in Belgium did not get this. Now, why is that happening? Uh, the reasons are well known. We have plenty of studies. The process is cumbersome, and people, especially people who most need it, find it difficult to navigate these processes. There is a lack of awareness, and there is stigma associated with asking for help. So what what's, can we do? I mean, we all, all the cities here, intervene in making services digital, making, putting them online, making them more accessible. And that's important, that that helps simplification. But at the same time, you don't get to those who need it most. We know the issue, digital divide, internet access, understanding and capacity to fill out the form. This is the, the statistics in, in red, are, are the percentage of citizens who make online transactions with government. And you know, I've been working on digital government for 20 years now, and we are a bit stuck. <laughs> at this 38%, not much more. So there is a gap in to what extent making services, putting services online can help you addressing this gap. So what cities, regions, countries are doing today is going to the next step, proactive service delivery, where services and benefits are automatically provided to those who qualify based on data already held by government. No need to apply, no stop shop. This is, if you want, is the third stage. We have talked about making service available online in the 2000. We have talked about the once only principle in 2010. We put forward the idea of making to the 20s the age of proactive services as a flagship goal for digital government policy in Europe. And it's happening. And we have cases in the policy brief, and two of them are here with us today. We will hear directly by them. Portugal is enrolling the families who are eligible to receive the discount social energy tariff automatically. They share the data internally between the different departments, income data, so civil registry data, social benefits data, and then they give the, they give the information to the energy providers, but they don't give the income information to the energy providers. They simply say this family is eligible. So the data shared is very limited, is minimized. 
Helsinki pre-register, and we will hear about it today, pre-register kids to the childcare. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, we all know how difficult it is and how challenging it is for parents to register kids to, uh, to the childcare. It happens automatically via an SMS opt-out, based on opt-out. And by the way, the opt-out is very, very small. And Catalonia informs students about their right and pre-register pre them for university scholarships and notifies them that they can request the, the benefit they are entitled to proactively. Now, I will not go into the detail of the cases, you can find them, but I want to show you just one slide. Uh, this is the total number of beneficiaries in the social electricity tariffs in Portugal. Now, I have a question for you, and I would like to see who guess when the automatic proactive services was introduced. Yes, that's right. Uh, it basically, the rate of adoption multiplied sixfold. And I think every one of us who is into providing service to citizens knows how difficult it is to make such a step and how difficult it is to gain adoption. And we have heard from Kiev about unbelievable rates of adoption. This is what we should be talking about. And this is what Portugal has done. Now, this is just the exception. There are very few services. Cap Gemini tells us in the government benchmarking that we have an 88% uh, score in Europe on average on user centricity and only 6% on proactive service delivery. And our own dashboard that you see here on the right, the user centricity dashboard, asks about the supply of online services, uh, whether administration provide a proactive service delivery, and only three administration answered positively, and two of them are here without, with us today. The third one is ESPO. Now, why is this happening? Why is this the exception? There are five factors. Data protection, and this is always, often misrepresented. GDPR does not require the consent of citizens to process their data to ensure delivery of a social benefit. There is public interest written into GDPR. But too often we think that GDPR means con consent for everything. This is not the case. Data quality. Obviously, if you give the money <laughs> based on the data that you held, if you have poor data, the money will be misspent. And this is a risk. At the end of the day, when a citizen requests something, it's a way to outsource the responsibility for data to the citizens. It's the declaration of the citizens. But if you don't do that, then you should ensure that your public registers are in good, in good conditions. And this is, represents a major challenge. Digital ready policies, we encounter in the case studies, some laws require citizens to request the service. Some laws require the citizens to sign the service. Obviously, they are old laws, but they are still in place. It means that if you want to introduce proactive service, you actually need to change the law. It, Higher, it's a higher threshold. Interoperability. We are talking about, if you want to make services proactive, you need to merge data from different sources, from different data sets. It's not an accident that the most common uh, proactive service in Europe is a child benefit, because it's not based on crossing different databases, it's just on the civil registries. You know, if you have a child, you have the right to this, so this is automatic. And that's why everyone starts from child the child benefit that is universal, from universal service. It gets more complicated, but arguably more important when you need to cross data from different registries. And by the way, the examples that we have seen share one thing, unique permanent identifiers. This ensures the interoperability of the different registries. I'm saying this because we have a debate in Europe right now on the revision of the EIDAS, EIDAS regulation about whether we can push for persistent unique identifiers. It's a technical uh, jargon, but it's very important. And finally, governance. You know, when we talk with Portugal, I said, yeah, interoperability was difficult, but much more difficult was putting together all these departments and having them share data in the right format and, and allowing other departments to act on behalf. So these are the factors that we identify. Uh, now, President von der Leyen, in her recent State of the European Union, 
said an important sentence that I reproduce here that emphasized the need for government to really help citizens. How do we do that through proactive services? Uh, we propose to make proactive digital service the new flagship of the European digital strategies to deliver on the promise of the Berlin Declaration for human-centric digital government. Human-centric is not about algorithmic bias and data protection only. Human-centric is also about helping citizens. In, to do so, we propose to make the key social benefits for vulnerable group automatic by default by 2030. This is, should be the challenge. Just as 20 years ago we said that the challenge was put all services, all key services online, this should be the next challenge. And the reason is simple. The reason is not just that this is important. The reason when, when you define something as a flagship, it be, it's because it is useful. It, as a flagship objective, it trickles down. If you want to make service proactive, you need to put your data in order, you need to have interoperability. So it's a flagship goal that actually forces you to put your back office in order. Third, ensure digital ready and proactive ready legislation. Fourth, the European Data Protection Board should clarify to what extent GDPR allows for proactive public services. We should provide concrete support to data quality with the recovery and resilience facility and the other structural funds. Strengthen the European interoperability framework and the IDAS revision, in particular with regard to persistent unique identifiers. Give more teeth to the European interoperability framework. Launch data-driven pilots. There is a lot of scope for fantastic innovation when it comes to helping people by analyzing data. And some governments have started to do that, Netherlands in particular. And last but not least, you know, Europe does not have competencies in the field of digital governance. So benchmarking is really important, soft instruments such as benchmarking. So what if we start measuring top five social benefits how, to what extent they are automatically provided by public administration and make this the measurement, the key performance indicator of digital government in Europe. That's it. That comes from the discussion we have had for many of you and many of you are here in the room, so I want to thank you for the input. Obviously, this is all our responsibility, but I'd like to know if, what you think about this. Thank you. Thank you, David. We'll come uh, to David for questions to David at the end of the of the next session. Um, we very much hope that this uh, policy brief will spark uh, um, a new change um, in in digital government. Uh, we're delighted that it starts also at the local uh, level too, and we hope proactive services will turn from from the exception, uh, the six percent, into the the reversed. Um, so as David mentioned, mentioned, two of the case studies in the policy brief are, are here with us today. Nuria and uh, Thomas from Helsinki will talk to us um, about uh, their proactive services. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce uh, Nuria first. Nuria is Espuni is Salvado. She is uh, the Director General for Digital Administration and Organization in the Government of Catalonia. Um, and apart of, from being our wonderful host uh, today, she is the driving force behind Catalonia's digital transformation and also behind the region's vision to deliver proactive services and anticipate uh, the needs of the Catalonian citizens. Um, Nuria, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks to you, Risha, and thank you all for coming for, uh, to Catalonia. Uh, our warmest welcome to our home. Uh, I would like to especially uh, thank our colleagues of, uh, from GIF. Uh, we are aware of the situation, the situation you are, and we are extremely happy to have you here. Uh, we are with you, we give you uh, and your people our, our support. So, uh, I agree completely with uh, the speech of uh, the presentation of, of uh, David, and uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I think I will repeat 
same things because uh, so that it's good because it it uh, that means that we are in the same way and that's uh, that's great. So uh, as you know, the Catalan government has recently joined the user centricity network, and we are glad uh, to see uh, so many governments uh, that share our, our concern uh, to deliver uh, better public services. Uh, right now, in our government, we are dealing with a big project, as uh, Christian mentioned, it, uh, that aims to transform our, um, our public administration. And I prefer uh, always to talk about transformation uh, rather than digital transformation, you know, to remove digital from the sentence, because the, the key point of all this project uh, is not technology, but change. The change uh, in how we deliver services, the change in how we use data, the change in how we think. Uh, and one of the basic objectives that we have to deal uh, is this one, is changing the mindset inside our organization and uh, I, I guess inside all the public administration. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, that you have the same problems um, no, about this common excuse for not moving, moving forward, to, go, to not go out of our a comfort zone uh, in, in the sense that it's not possible, we always done this uh, in this way, uh, we cannot do it because the legal framework, because the organization uh, culture and, and, and so on. So, uh, and, and we are aware that this is the moment, is the momentum, uh, because the work is changing, it's changing in uh, every time in a more digital way, and because we have a great opportunity, thanks in part to the um, Next Generation Grants uh, fundings, and also thanks to this absolutely amazing community of people that is user centricities. That, uh, that, allows, that allow us to push together to make things move uh, in this sense, uh, helping each other, supporting this faith. Um, I, I am a strong believer in, in the power of collaboration and, and the power of sharing projects, uh, best practices, experience, uh, so we can work faster and in a more certain way and maybe more fun. Uh, so, we are glad to have joined you uh, some months ago. Okay, let's go. Uh, or not? <laughs> okay, technology. Okay. Uh, our approach uh, to digital government is by redesigning uh, our processes, um, using ne new methodologies, uh, emergent technologies, uh, new sparters, that's important, uh, on co-creation uh, co with the citizens. For me, that is uh, one of the key points. And, uh, and of course, uh, using data, extracting all the power uh, that data have. Uh, all this combination uh, may allow us to get real user-centered services. I mean, easy to use. That's the, that's the point. Understandable, personalized, and proactive. The principles that define the digital government that Catalonia wants to, uh, to have are defined in a decree that uh, we approved um, a couple of years ago. And uh, this is based on, um, as I have just uh, indicated, that in digital services, uh, human centered, easy to use, and data. Data is the basis, uh, the lever for all this transformation. Uh, to get advanced uh, digital services, but it is important to highlight that the first we need, uh, as also uh, uh, David has mentioned, it, that we need data to be governed, to be managed, to TD it up uh, in order to have uh, real quality data. Uh, I mean, updated, completed, so on. And so it can be reused. Uh, and we are working hard on this. Uh, it is, in fact, one of our key uh, projects. Uh, and proactive and um, the personalized uh, services are the summit, the, the pinnacle of, of, of this model. Proactive and personalized, 
personalized services, uh, what does it mean for us? It means delivering to every person the service she needs uh, when they need. Uh, proactive governments must anticipate uh, to citizens' needs. Reactive government wait, just wait for people to ask for services. Uh, but this, if a government uh, knows the citizens' needs, uh, waiting for citizens to ask for services will not be uh, quality services. So uh, proactive government, as I said, use data to anticipate to these needs of the citizens. So, uh, the conclusion that I am sure uh, all of you will agree uh, is that we need to know our clients, our customers, our citizens, in order to give uh, them uh, what they really need, uh, what they deserve, in fact. Uh, like the private sector has been doing uh, for a long time. But uh, actually, we, uh, what we know on users' uh, needs. Um, well, uh, in 2019, we did a big, by a big data study um, to discover correlations in citizens' behavior regarding our administrative procedures. Like, you know, people uh, that ask for uh, procedure A uh, will also ask for procedure B or uh, most people uh, asking for service uh, C, uh, they normally uh, repeat in the future, uh, asking for the same services. We realized that we had a data bias. Uh, that's a problem, obviously. Uh, the fact is, is that we didn't have data about, uh, you know, the paper-based request or uh, from local administration, I mean municipalities, uh, for instance, or even from some specific procedures, some sectorial services. However, fortunately, we got some correlations, uh, and we saw the possibility uh, of building some, some kind of proactive services, such uh, collective uh, emails, uh, alerts, um, for all the people interested in a grant or a public job offer that uh, um, David mentioned it. Uh, personalized alerts, uh, alerting you that uh, some license that you uh, have from the administration is about to expire soon. Recommendation for administrative procedures, uh, like Amanda Sundo, uh, you know, uh, the customers uh, also book, the customers that book that also book uh, oh, also, another one is to facilitate um, a profiled uh, force when citizens apply for the services. Sorry. But those services, as I say before, need good data. And unfortunately, we discovered that we don't have yet enough data to build uh, other proactive uh, services as, as, as a good uh, automatic recommender. Uh, however, uh, we are optimistic and we have enough data to build other kind of proactive uh, services. So we have already uh, profile forms, uh, application alerts, and, and we are working on personalized uh, alerts, for example, for people that have License, license to expire, as I said, for, and as I said before. Okay. A key element for proactive uh, services is consent management. Proactivity involves that the government needs to use data that citizens delivered in the past. Under uh, the GDPR, that David also has mentioned, uh, and our own legislation on data protection as citizens' uh, data cannot be reused for a different purpose uh, in a different service or procedure that they, uh, that they um, need um, without asking for their consent. So we need user permission to do that, to the reuse the data that we have from them. So, 
we had uh, to create a system to manage the consent to reuse this data, uh, a, cons a consent management that was easy both for uh, clients, for citizens, but also for, for us, for the service uh, deliverers. Um, th that is the, the consent register. I I show you. Uh, as a citizen, uh, you are empowered to subscribe or unsubscribe easily. On you know, we have a private area on the uh, government uh, website. Let now let me show you how it works in a real case uh, about university grants. Um, Students that ask uh, for a grant last year could, subs could subscribe to a proactive alert. Uh, so this year, uh, when the grant was available, uh, they received an email alert, easy, uh, which broke each one to a profiled uh, form with last year's that data. Uh, if nothing had changed, Excuse me. No, if nothing can change, the student uh, just had to confirm the request. The grant was processed, and the student uh, uh, doesn't need to care about that anymore. And they, and they receive the money, of course. This is the objective overall. Easy to use services to convert the citizens to a receiving act actor uh, rather than a requiring one. But uh, we have to take into account other considerations. Um, in our journey towards proactivity, we have discovered that the, there has to be a balance, an equilibrium between easiness and responsibility. Uh, when they work, proactive uh, services are perfect. Citizens don't need uh, to care about application, application periods, and don't waste time applying uh, for them. So public services uh, can reach uh, the people that, that they need more, instead, instead of just reaching the people who know more how to benefit from them or who have the tools uh, of the, or the capacity to, to ask for them. So, in our opinion, uh, that's not just a way to facilitate uh, the relationships uh, between citizens and administration, but also are talking about uh, social justice. It's a matter of social justice, uh, social fairness. Public resources should be for the people uh, that need them most, uh, or not for the people that know better or bureaucracy. Uh, However, it's hard to deliver uh, easy services. When we tell people, don't worry, we will alert you, we must forever meet our promise. Uh, so besides that, we cannot deliver 100% uh, of proactive services if we don't know 100% the through. You know, the data again. So for example, as, uh, as for our data, a person might not deserve the grant, but what happens if the data was wrong? When data is not perfect, some, someone must decide on this balance. More proactivity and more government errors, mistakes, or less proactivity and we let the citizens to revise the data. A balance. And it also means that data need to be perfect. If the government doesn't have correct data, updated data, the citizens shall assume responsibility on data through a a responsible statement. Uh, and, and the government should not damage anyone uh, by using incorrect uh, predictions. We cannot tell the study in trust us uh, if you don't receive an alert, an alert if uh, it is that you don't deserve um, this, this run, if data might, might, might have changed. So, summarizing. The fact is that proactivity is, is in uh, work, uh, work in progress uh, for our government. Uh, our government, our government started this journey to proactivity some years uh, ago, but that there is uh, still a long path uh, to walk. 
And, and, as, as, and uh, as I said earlier at the beginning of my, my speech, uh, joining user centricity offers us a big opportunity uh, to achieve our goals faster and, and better. Uh, new data creates new opportunities. Uh, we haven't got enough data, data to offer a cool recommender today, but we are very optimistic and, and we hope that uh, it might become possible in, in a few years. Uh, in this sense, I would like to ask for some help uh, of European policymaker about the GDPR. Uh, after some years of, of, the, of uh, GDPR practice, Euro European policymakers should review the government, government's needs in personal da data use. As, as uh, government missions are very different uh, than the ones of the private sector, so uh, GDPR uh, is currently being applied depending on state-level interpretations. Uh, and that are too restrictive in some countries. So, uh, proactive services and data analytics uh, uh, to define evidence-based uh, public policies should, should be defined as public interest finalities all across Europe. That's our uh, opinion. And therefore, uh, there should be a common GDPR interpretation uh, or DGPR uh, modification to allow for this uh, uses in the governments. Uh, we think that's, that's important. Um, on the other hand, uh, we are also exploring new approaches. Uh, correlations between procedures are often the, often the consequence of, um, of a life event. Uh, so grouping some uh, procedures uh, under an unified services can give full response uh, to a life event, uh, and, and that is proactivity as well. Uh, but we must uh, always remember that ethical limit, absolute proactivity, means perfect knowledge. Uh, under imperfect knowledge, there are some risks to be anticipated and, and a compromise to be found between easiness, as I said before, and, and consequences. And just to finish, let me remark the engagement of our government with citizens in order to make easy our relationships, to improve their life, and that is, at the end, our mission as public uh, management managers. Uh, still a long path uh, to walk, but we are glad, very glad to walk it with all of you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nuria, for laying this out so clearly, the challenges, the opportunities, and, uh, and also the recommendations. Uh, I would like to uh, move now to Oleg Polovinko. Oleg Polovinko is uh, the Chief Information Officer, the CIO of Kiev City Council. He leads the implementation of Kiev's uh, digital strategy and is, of course, behind Kiev's uh, digi digital uh, flagship application. You saw him already on the screen. He is part of the dream <coughs> team um, of Kiev. Um, we've heard about adoption rates. We've heard um, about your your true digital city, and we understand Ukraine as a true digital nation. We look forward to hearing what you have to say. Uh, I know the presentation. What you already see uh, about the Ki Kiev digital our goals, our digital strategy. Uh, we are ready to be here. We are uh, glad to be part of user centric cities because this is that, that kind of value what, what we are focused. Uh, because uh, every, uh, every customer scenario, what, what we implementing in, in our services, we are starting from thinking about uh, our user, about their comfort. Uh, thanks to Russia, now we think about the survival options, which uh, expand it. We find it useful in, in other way in that world what, what we are facing now. Yeah, and uh, all, the, uh, all we together are facing to COVID. And uh, from my perspective, uh, like uh, CEO, I want to recommend you and uh, focus your attention on testing your systems, testing your procedures, because uh, 
for example, when uh, the rocket started to hitting the Kiev, we we announced our citizens that the uh, the alert uh, give them alert about the bombing. Uh, but uh, ask yourself and your citizens how you come back them from bombing shelters, how to notify them that the attack is finished. And that was surprised for us because in bomb shelters there is no data coverage of telecom operators, so you don't have connections with them. And you must to tell them that the attack is finished, come back. And this is a scenario what was not tested before and it was a surprise for us and we spent a few days to make this option in application, to um, ask businesses in Ukraine very good situation with, with uh, data providers, and uh, they help us to cover bomb shelters with Wi-Fi uh, in in few days, and we we, we used uh, this this channel to for for com communication. But this is a not finished scenario. What what not tested and not. Uh, Detailing the more detailed uh, prepare it before. So uh, from our um, side, we see that, that you know how it's called it, black swan. Yeah, the, by Nassim Taleb that these swans now flying every year. Yes, yeah, so uh, future ready. It's it's hard to to manage these processes all together. It's it's hard, quite hard to build this architecture of the future digital solutions because you must to be ready for different challenges from other side because from f one, one an, another challenge evacuation <coughs> your responsible guy for cyber security for data centers for any any kind of special system what you use what he choose previous evacuate his family or make his uh, work task and you know, we, we saw that m more than half choose to evacuate their family. And you have the lack of resources in critical situation when you need more resources than, than, than you have. So all these cases, it's, it's not about only the war. It's about natural disasters. In, it's about the factories. Uh, it's about the nuclear station. All this together and uh, all these processes need to be very flexible in, in short contact with your citizens and be ready to manage them, manage crowds in Seoul, yeah, months ago. The, the, the how many people, 100 people died in the crowd, only on the street. So this is the challenges of, the, of big cities. We, we are facing it. So our recommendation from our said experience, we, uh, Ukraine, in, in the darkest time, I think, now, uh, situation, because every day we lost our citizens. One of the best our citizens, we're losing them. And uh, not only against Russia, because few days, f first week, it was terrible situation from other side. And sometimes a friendly fire was, was normal situation for that day. So, and we understand and we believe now that we can be ready more for that and save more lives. So uh, this is uh, up to you. Every everyone responsible for that, you can change it. And if you start earlier, you save lives in future. Yes, thank you, thank you for this, Oleg. Thank you for reminding us that um, and and for this excellent speech. Um, our next speaker uh, is Thomas, Thomas Lechtinen. He's uh, the head of data in the city of Helsinki. Uh, we've heard data already a few times. They are, of course, the cornerstone or maybe the, even the foundation uh, of proactive service delivery. Helsinki has a, an experience to share. Their experience is also in the policy brief and uh, the, I would like also to mention that the, this proactive ser service of Helsinki won the 2022 User Centricity Award for the best user centric service in Europe. Next year, you are up in very difficult competition with Kiev, I have to say. Uh, but the floor is yours. Thank you. 
Yeah, well, <clears throat> first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me. I'm, I feel in some way I'm embarrassed that the challenges I feel that the, our city feels that they are not actually challenges anymore. When you're talking about creating Wi-Fi networks for bomb shelters that kids can go to lessons, they are the, they're the real challenge. But uh, well, hello everybody. My name is Thomas Lehtinen. I'm the head of data for the city of Helsinki. I lead the data analytics team, and our team is responsible for, for city level artificial intelligence development, AI ethics, uh, knowledge management development, digital twin development, open data, software robotics, and chatbot development, and and. I would say that the Finnish city is quite unique in Europe because we offer absolutely huge number of services. For example, basic healthcare, social services, education are responsible for the cities and we have a lot of uh, voluntary uh, services as well. And at the moment there are also experiments in Finland that we were employment services belong to the cities as well and it's becoming a permanent in a few years. And in Finland, we have digitalized many services a long time ago, and some, system have, uh, some systems have data from almost 30 years. And, and when we are talking about data, the data provides more value when, it, when it's utilized. And on the other hand, the data that is collected at great effort, but it's not very usable and remains unused, it's the most expensive kind of data. So we have a lot of work to do here. I, I think we are not using data as well as we could, at least when we are talking about modern technologies. And I, wanna, I wanted to show that uh, when we are talking about proactive services, the idea isn't very, very new. In Finland, we have used proactive services at least 50 years. So when we are talking about, for example, cervical cancer screenings, uh, they save lives. Women of 30 to 65 years of age are invited to take part of, of cervical cancer screenings every five years. And about 70 of those invited participate, participate in the screening for cervical cancer. And it has been estimated that the screenings avoid more, more than 250 cancer deaths in Finland each year. So this is a very, very easy like, example of how the proactive and data-driven approach to healthcare can really save lives. And we should apply this, this kind of thinking to other services we produce as well. And, and I feel that data and AI will help us identify new health risks much earlier and it will save lives and improve the quality of life. And I feel also that it saves time, energy, and money as well. But the big shift that the city is going on is, is that I feel that the Helsinki exists to its residents. The, the city should always strive to provide better service to its residents. And in this context, better service means offering residents individual targeted and proactive services when they are needed. This type of proactive targeting of re residents, it requires widespread employment of analytical methods. Furthermore, people should always be able to personally decide how their data is utilized in accordance of my data principles. And <clears throat> For example, demographic trends as, as aging and growing population and, and also immigration, as well as current COVID-19 crisis, it is putting pressure on Helsinki's healthcare system. And uh, in Finland, 10% of people, mostly elderly residents and patients with multiple health problems, generate 80% of country's health and social care costs. And at the same time, Finland uh, is, is seeing a shortage of qualified medical professionals. So something needs to change. And, and meanwhile, GDPR and other privacy laws place various restrictions on processing and using personal data. Uh, 
especially around consent. And the issue currently being investigated in Helsinki is that can CD proactively contact people based on their healthcare data when we are talking about health risks identified from the data and what conditions? But we are also working proactive services in other areas as well. Well, well-being of the people is not only about healthcare. Cities have a wide range of services, so we, if we want to have a better able to understand the individual needs and problems, we can provide more personal suggestions of what should be done. <clears throat> and here's the example, one of our proactive services. It was the preschool placement for six years old. And this is, this is an example how how we can make the citizens' lives a lot easier. More than 90% of preschool age children, just six years old, are already participating in Helsinki's early childhood education. So, <clears throat> so that data has been submitted to cities' digital systems already. So using the data made it possible to carry out experiment where preschool places offered to the uh, child and the guardians without separate application. The experiment was so successful that it's becoming a permanent practice. Suitable early childhood education units will be offered by text message to the children in Helsinki who are starting pre-primary education. And this means that the parents or the guardians will not longer be required to submit an application. Confirmation of the placement took one minute by text message. Earlier it took two months with paper and online forms. <clears throat> so we want to make the, like the day-to-day -day activities much easier in Helsinki for residents and anticipate their service needs. And proactive services will help the locals save time and money. And the, uh, offering places in early childhood education by text message is a very concrete and terrific way to work towards these goals. I'm not sure if this works. No. Oh. Yeah. So it was a very strong push. <laughs> yeah, but. This is like, we want to show also like what is our approach to ethical and transparent management of the personal data. And, and we want to build the proactive services on the terms of the citizens as, as transparently as possible. Finns trust authorities and we want to keep the trust. So we are currently building a system by piece by piece. And one of the very, very important pieces is like we are calling it compliance and ethical board. And it analyzes and documents various regulatory reviews and ethical considerations. And it creates and updates a kind of case law database. And we hope that it accelerates development in the city, but it also controls the use of data more precisely. So, for example, data providers in, which are in the city are data sources, can can better understand, can the data be shared? Is there a legal basis for the data processing? And at the same time, data consumers, which are the services using the data, uh, can, <coughs> can see that where, can get, where they can get the data, is it okay to use? At the same time, the citizens of the city can give permission for the use of the data and or, or example, see the reason, for example, the law for the use of data. And for example, when we are talking about, uh, let's say, social exclusion, it's not something that we can accept, for example, young men in Finland to give the consent for the use of data. So we need to use also sometimes without the consent. 
But our citizens can see always the services that use artificial intelligence from our AI register and get more information about them. And in the future, we also intend to open our algorithms to everyone. But thank you. Thank you, Thomas Helsinki's vision for a, for a culture change from a reactive to a proactive government is, is very inspiring. Uh, there's more about this in the, in the policy brief as well. Um, so now we are unfortunately a little bit over time, but I would like to take any questions for all of our speakers, if there are any from, uh, from the floor. The speakers can also ask questions if, if they want to. <laughs> well, I think then uh, that's it for today. I would like to uh, invite. Sorry, there were questions. I didn't see. I apologize. Hi, uh, my name is Rasmus. I'm from Riga City Council. Uh, one thing that not a lot of you talked about was the specific technical solutions you use to implement these kind of uh, these uh, these kind of proactive services. And we've been looking at it as well. And what we're trying to find is, you know, how can we make the development costs for this lower? Are there any platforms that are better or easier to use and easier to integrate? Because I know that all of your technical infrastructure is probably very complicated, right? And it takes a lot of integrations and a lot of custom development. But I'm thinking whether there are any specific out of the box tools that help you to bring these type of proactive services faster for residents. Thank you. Uh, at the moment, my team has do, uh, two uh, data scientists and we are getting to third one. So we are building actually our own machine learning environment. And so I think you should contact us so we can help you because they are building actually the environment from scratch. But I think there, there isn't really like ready platforms, this one. And I also I like to say that it's something that we won't expect to have. Like I think that when we are talking about proactive services in the cities, I'm not sure like a different kind of companies are very interested about them. It's, it's the cities that has have to do that. For example, when we are talking about uh, in social services in in Finland, they are not people who are maybe they have offered a different kind of smart watches or something like that. So companies are not interested, and then so cities have to build from scratch. Thank you, Thomas. I see another question there at the back. Hello, Antonio Filograna from uh, Engineering, Engineering Informatica. So, mm, you select your services to become, let me say, proactive, uh, st uh, starting from uh, uh, the citizens, starting from feedback from citizens, or uh, in a sort of co-creation activities, or use the uh, top-down approach. So you, you, you are using a top-down or bottom-up approach for the selection of the services. Yeah, when you, you for example, for the uh, kindergarten enrollment, no, you are asking uh, to the citizen to understand what kind of services uh, they prefer to be personalized or proactive or uh, uh, it's uh, a matter of uh, we, a decision made by city. Uh, we right now we are working in, in several points about that. One, it's uh, um, to create the services with the citizens, the new ones. The other one uh, point is that we have, uh, not me, but another colleague uh, that, are, that are responsible of the front office. Uh, uh, they are working with citizens in labs to, uh, you know, to know uh, how they understand, feel the satisfaction about the services that yeah, we are uh, right now. And the other one is um, we will, uh, um, in order to respond to you about which services 
maybe it's better to, to begin to, to transform, to change. Um, uh, we, are, we have uh, made a little uh, analysis and we have uh, detected that um, if uh, we, right now we have uh, around uh, 1,800 uh, procedures, digital one, uh, but um, trying to change it uh, together, it's, uh, you know, you, uh, we need a big task, tax for resources, money. So um, we analyze that if uh, we change, uh, we shift completely uh, in, a, in a proactive way, we try to do that. Uh, around the, uh, just the 10% uh, of them, so uh, 180, um, that result um, that uh, affect uh, about the 90% uh, of the all the of the requirements of the citizens, so we will focalize in change this ten percent, and the other ones we will to you know to to make better, but focalizing in 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 this ten percent. I don't know if I yeah, yeah, respond. Yeah, Thank you. I'm afraid we have uh, run out of time. Um, we can take uh, more questions. We can continue the discussion, the networking lunch that will take place in the room uh, next door. Before I thank all the speakers and all of you, I would like to make an announcement. Users and Tristis will also be at the Smart City Expo. Uh, we are hosting tomorrow a session at 5 o'clock in the European Smart Communities um, uh, booth on the state of user centricities and the user centricities dashboard. We look forward to, to welcome you there. Um, please join me, join me in thanking again our, our wonderful speakers. Thank you for being here today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs>